Hey guys, it's Greg here at the Vinyl Rundown channel. This is a little video inspired by Rob Walker from Jolly Old England, and he's issued a contest and challenge to talk about the groups or artists that you wish you would have seen live in concert. And during the COVID 2020, when nobody saw any concerts, it's timely to think about, gee, I wish I would have seen this concert. Uh, I'm going to give you five or six groups that, not just groups or musicians that I wish I would have seen in concert, but ones that were either groundbreaking or influential or their concerts were amazing. And um, some of these I'm going to look at from the point of view of having gone to see them fresh and not even known who they were, like the first one, which I'm about to get to. Rob and I are about the same age. I'm a little bit older, but we're both kind of children of the 80s and during the 80s i was in high school and college and working at record stores and this band was huge but i didn't really pay that much attention to them the clash but their concerts were supposed to be just wild wild amazing amount of energy and intensity and just imagine being in uh, london in the late 70s and one of your mates saying hey man let's go to the club Let's go down to the whatever. There's a band playing called The Clash. You should check it out. And just being blown away by the intensity of that live show. So number one on my list is The Clash. Not in any particular order, mind you. Um, also, imagine being in a club in New York in the mid-40s. And somebody says, hey, let's go to this nightclub and have a few drinks and listen to some jazz, and you're like, yeah, I don't know if I like jazz that much. And this guy takes the stage, Charlie Parker, with his little bebop quintet with uh, Dizzy Gillespie or whoever. This one features Dodo Mamorosa, who's a piano player that I've heard of, Miles Davis. Miles Davis was like 16 when he joined that group, so just groundbreaking. Just imagine being there to see Charlie Parker and having your mind blown by the musical intensity and the change, the change to music that was about to come. Uh, who else? Very similar. There's a guy who only played concerts as a headliner for like three years. His career was only three years long. But imagine going to see him in 67 or 68 and just going, what the heck was that? Oh my God, Jimi Hendrix. His whole career was only three years long when he go from the release of his first U.S. album to when he died. He only put out three records and basically had a, a three-year-long career at the top. I'm not talking about the early days, but the most flamboyant and intense, what just happened there? The most flamboyant and intense rock star of all time. And, you know, you'd be blown away by seeing Jimi Hendrix and never seeing anything like that before in your life. Okay. Here's somebody I had a chance to see multiple times, and now I regret not going because I was invited. And this is a person who had an untimely death, Prince. I was working at the record store when um, uh, Purple Rain came out. I guess that was 83 or 84. That was the hugest record of the season. I just, it was nonstop Prince and Purple. We had a Purple Christmas tree at the record store. Years later, um, not too long before his death, he played a series of concerts at the LA Forum, and it was like 10 or 20 concerts in a row for 25 bucks each, and he was going to play music that was maybe not his best known stuff, and my friend invited me, I'm like, nah, I don't know, you know, going to the Forum is a pain in the neck, for one thing, the traffic in LA. He died, I regret I didn't go see him, also supposed to be an amazing performer. These are not my favorite artists necessarily, these are people that I wish I would have seen live. And here's another one. Uh, I wish I would have seen this person play at the height of his creativity, which I would say is the mid-70s. And here's a record I got for $2.99. Double record live set. Is this 1974? Mr. Frank Zappa. A lot of his music is very weird. And this is a period of his that I like a lot when he's doing... He had a pretty large band and he had horn players and he did an amazing version of of Stairway to Heaven and um, 
whipping post and Stravinsky and, and his own compositions and singing and great guitar playing and great musicianship. Uh, there's just nothing else like Frank Zappa ever, wa ever was and never will be again. Okay, last artist on my list. Um, I like to give a little intro, you know, give you a little background. You can guess who it is. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. One of the greatest performers, one of the greatest improvisers of all time, um, was hailed while he was alive as the greatest piano player in the country, in the world. I don't know. Uh, it was a little bit before the internet. Today we think of him as somebody who uh, wrote a lot of great music, but in his day, he was the premier piano player, and he challenged people to these duels, like these rap battles, where any visiting piano player had said, hey, I'll play, you and I play together, well, let's see who comes out on top, we're just going to improvise. You can't guess who this is yet, can you? Greatest of all time. I brought a book because it has a better picture than all the classical records I have. Beethoven, Ludwig von Beethoven. We think of him as a composer, but he was, in fact, the most um, amazing improviser of his day. He could sit down at the piano and just play for an hour of music that had never been conceived before, right off the top of his head. And he did concerts where he, most famous concert of his career, maybe the most famous classical concert of all time, I think it was 1804. Uh, he premiered three masterpieces, the fifth symphony, the sixth symphony, and one of his piano concertos. He composed all the music. He conducted. He promoted the concert because they didn't have promoters and managers back then. And then he sat down at the piano and improvised during his piano concerto. Nobody else liked that. Amazing. That's right. Ludwig von Beethoven. I think that, that covers it for now, guys. Thank you for watching. Please some s consider subscribing to the Vinyl Rundown, which is my channel. And uh, I hope you've already subscribed to Rob Walker.